further ado, I would like to welcome to the stage Dr. Stephen Ferguson. You leave the mic there. Oh, no, I don't need it there. Okay. Nice to see you all. Okay, brilliant. Lights are on. Lovely audience we've got here. I think this is the most, seems to be one of the most we've had. And the liveliest audience. Are you the liveliest audience? Yes. Well, let's see if you're more lively than the audience than we had last time. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to split you down the middle. And how are you feeling over here? <laughs> not bad, not bad. Have you got more energy than that side? Yeah. Wow! <laughs> how are you feeling over here? Yeah. Brilliant. Are they better than you? Yeah. How are you feeling over here? Yeah. Wow! Excellent. Excellent. Okay, I want to take you back to the 20th of April, 1999. The 20th of April, 1999. Now, what's happened was, these two boys, uh, Eric Harris and uh, uh, Klebold, Mr. Klebold, these two people entered the school, Columbine School, I'm sure you've heard of it. They killed 12 students, they killed two teachers, injured 21 students, and three of which were actually running out of the classroom. Now, how would you describe the situation that was going on there? What type of situation would you class it as? Was it a friendly situation? How was it? What was going on there? What would you say was going on in that school at the time these boys were behaving in such a manner? Absolute chaos. Absolute chaos. Now... Supposing they, someone said, we want these boys, if they were still alive, to spend the weekend with you. You know, we've got these two boys, they're going to come round and they're going to spend the weekend with you. What would start to take place in your house? My dear, what would you say? What would you say? Chaos. Anybody else? What would start to take place in your house? Sorry? Panic. 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 <laughs> Sorry? They wouldn't, be they wouldn't be allowed in your house. <laughs> you wouldn't invite them around. Now, another name, what the, the, the description that the pharmaceutical people give for pharmaceuticals, according to the NHS website, is an antagonist. An antagonist. Now, an antagonist is something that causes destruction, something that's damaging. So what happens, and we're not saying, let's clear this up before we go any further. Let's clear this up nice and clear. We're not saying that pharmaceutical drugs are never needed. We can't say such a statement. We're not, we're not saying they're not needed, and we're not saying that you should never have them. Because there are situations where there are heart attacks. There are situations where there are strokes. Now, even in those situations, what starts to take place in your body when you put a pharmaceutical drug in your body? What starts to take place? And more so if you're someone with high levels of melanin. What starts to take place in your body? Sorry? It's poisoning in your body. Now, bearing in mind our illustration, bearing in mind our illustration, those two boys were causing destruction and damage in that school. They were antagonists in that school. So what's actually taking place in your body once you put it into your body? For instance, you have a heart attack. You have a heart attack. You're given warfarin. You're giving warfarin. Now, according to the pharmaceutical people, the chemical people, they all say that the warfarin 
is sin in your blood so that the blood can go through your blood vessels. Now, what is warfaring? What is it? Sorry? Someone said rat poison. So, what? Sorry? <laughs> Mouse poisons. Yeah. So, what I'm trying to say is, on one instance, on one instance, in a small way, we could say it's sinning the blood. There are other things that are natural that can thin the blood, but we're not saying they should replace warfarin. The point I'm trying to make is, on one instance, you're thinning the blood, but on the bigger picture, because this person, not only when they've had the heart attack do they take the warfarin, how long are they told they're going to take the warfarin for? You're taking it for the rest of your life. Now, what did it do to the rats or the mouse? What did it do to them? Now, if we were to get a mouse and we were to experiment and give that mouse or that rat the warfarin, what would happen to the mouse in our experiment? Now, if it's able to kill the mouse, what can it do to the human being that's taking it for the rest of their life? What's it slowly doing to them? Sorry? It's killing you. <laughs> it's killing you. Do you see the point? Because it's been tested. It's been tested on the mouse that it will kill the rat, it will kill the mouse, and slowly it's gradually... Now, how does it kill you? How is it killing you? What's, what's, what's taking... The reason I'm stepping forward, those lights are a bit bright. But what, how is it killing you? Sorry? Slowly poisoning you, and how do you prove that? How can you see that starting to take place? You started off with just a heart attack. That was it. Maybe you had high blood pressure. That might have triggered it off. But then what starts to take place in your joints? You start to get... Sorry? Someone said sciatica, was it? Side effects. Side effects. Now, 